Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna study this uh, Newton's parabola with you guys. So uh, let's let's first take a look at this uh, this device. Okay. So uh, this device consists of uh, five identical medical balls suspended in this frame so that they can only move uh, in the same surface. And then this device is a very good demonstration of the conservation of energy and momentum. So let's, let's first call these balls number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 from your left to your right. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift the first ball to the side and then release it. Okay, let's see what will happen. So we can see that well, after I release it, well, it swings to the to your right and then strikes the, the second ball. And after the collision between the first ball and the other balls, the fifth ball starts to swing to the right and it can reach almost the height, the same height as uh, where I released the, the first ball. Okay, so, so this is a very, very simple pattern as we can see here. But uh, why? We can, we can ask a question like this. So for example, for example, uh, why can't, uh, why can't like these two ball, these two balls, the fourth and the fifth ball, they get the momentum and, uh, and the energy and then start to swing to the right together. Or as we just, we just saw here that uh, after the first ball, so if I release the first ball, it strikes the, the second ball and then it stops immediately itself. But why can't, why can't the first ball save some energy for itself and then bounces back? And then the, the fifth ball only gets part of its energy and momentum and swings to the right. To answer these questions, we have to make use of uh, the conservation of the energy and the momentum which I have already written that here. So let's, let's first uh, review these uh, two conservation laws briefly. So this conservation of energy tells us that if a system is isolated, that is to say the system, there is no energy transfer between the system and the environment. So in this case, the total energy of the system should be conserved. That means if we choose the final state and the initial state, so the total energy in this system should be a constant. So uh, similarly, the conservation of momentum tells us that so if our system is isolated, so uh, there is no momentum transfer between the system and the environment, so the total momentum in the system should be a constant. So I want to emphasize that energy is a scalar, but uh, momentum is a vector. So that means the momentum has three directions. So when we analyze the momentum, we have to analyze the momentum in three different directions, x, y, and v. Okay? And in some cases, in some cases, so the momentum in one direction, for, for example, in, in x direction, is conserved. However, the momentum in uh, y or z direction is not conserved. So there are cases like that, some cases like that. So when we analyze momentum, we should be careful. Okay? And I've also written down uh, the definition of uh, kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and the definition of momentum here. Are we going to use these definitions uh, when we analyze the problem? Okay? So now let's let's uh, let's first analyze the process. So uh, before before the first ball strikes the second ball, okay. So in this process, our initial state is when I release the ball, release the first ball, and our final state is when uh, it's right just uh, just right be before the first ball strikes the second ball. Okay, so this is for one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is our initial state, this is our 
final state. And in this process, the system only has one object, it's just the first one. So we're just going to analyze this one object. So we're just going to use uh, conservation of energy. So let's, uh, and, and we know that there's only one object, right? So the total energy only contains the energy of the first ball. And we know that in this process, there are two kinds of energy involved. One is kinetic energy, and one is the gravitational potential energy. So I'm just going to write down these two kinds of energies here. So the final kinetic energy of the first ball plus the final gravitational potential energy of the first ball. And these should be equal to K19, the total energy at the initial state, right? And uh, we're going to assume that uh, this line represent this line represents the zero potential line. So which means that uh, anything, anything at this line would have zero potential energy. And then we know that, okay, at the final state, the first ball is going to have zero potential energy, right? Because uh, the final, at the final state, the first ball reaches the zero potential point. Okay, so this guy would equal zero which means that we can just drop it. And then we know that, okay, we know the definition of these guys. So uh, I'm just going to write down these uh, three guys explicitly. We want F12 plus one half M. We want I12 plus F. G H. So we're going to assume the height of the first ball where I release it is H. And we know that, okay, at the initial state, when I release it, it doesn't have any speed. So this guy is 0, 2. So I'm going to drop this term. So eventually I'm going to get this equation. And again, uh, I should mention that we're going to assume that they, because they are identical metal balls, so they, they all have the same mass M. So in this case, uh, we only have two terms here. And then this is a very equation to solve. Uh, you can cancel this M, and then eventually you can find that V1F equals square root of 2GH. So this is the this is the final velocity of the first ball right before it strikes the second ball. Okay, so the first ball is going to strike the second ball with this uh, velocity. So now let's uh, let's analyze this the second process, which is the collision between the first and the second ball. So uh, during the collision, because the collision happens really really quickly, so we're gonna we're gonna assume that. Uh, the second ball is going to get its uh, velocity after the collision. Then it's going to strike the third ball. So even though it's, uh, it's in touch with the third ball during the collision, we're going to assume that uh, there's no force between the, the second ball and the, and the third ball. So in this case, in this case uh, during the collision, there's no external force on the system in the x direction. Okay? So, uh, and then we can we can apply the conservation of energy here. So we know that because uh, we 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 can ignore the friction force here. So that means uh, we're gonna assume there's no heat, there's no heat generated in this collision. And then we know that during the collision, these two guys they're only moving in the x direction. They're not moving in the y direction. So there's a so their potential energy is not changing here. So if we apply the conservation of energy here, we know that we can only we only need to 
uh, worry about the kinetic energy. Okay, so that means the kinetic energy of the system should be conserved during the uh, during the collision. So I'm just going to write down the the total energy for this uh, system at the final and the initial state. So this would be k one f plus k two f equals k one nine plus k two f. And then let's uh, let's write out these uh, four terms explicitly using uh, the definition of the kinetic energy. So this would be one half m v one f squared plus one half m v two f squared, and the same thing on the right hand side, one half m v one i squared plus one half m v two i squared. Okay. Now let's see if there was any zeros. We like zeros because we, we can just drop them. So we know that initially the second boat doesn't have any speed because it's uh, at rest. So this guy will be zero. Right? So we can safely drop this guy. And then we can also cancel this uh, two, well, one half m in these uh, three terms. So we can get v one f squared plus v two f squared equals v one i squared. And what is this v one i? This is the initial velocity of the first ball right before it strikes the second ball. And which which is the final velocity of the first ball in the first process we calculate here, right? In the first process, we said the final state is just right before the first one strike the second one. So this guy is our initial uh, velocity for the first guy here. So eventually, we're going to have this uh, equation. All right. Now we're just going to apply the conservation of momentum. So as, as we just said, there's no force on the system in the x direction. So uh, the momentum is conserved in the x direction. And uh, momentum is a vector, but we're not considering anything in the y or z direction because these two guys, they're not moving in the y or z direction. Okay? So we're just going to we're just going to only write down the conservation of uh, momentum in the x direction. So to emphasize that, I'm just going to write down x direction here. And then in x direction, we know that, okay, the total momentum of the system should be conserved. And the system now has two balls, one and two. So I'm just going to write down the momentum for each of them. So P1F plus P2F equals P1I plus P2I. And then using the definition of the momentum. So we know uh, this equation will become M1 or M, that they have the same mass, M1F plus M3. 2f equals m v 1i plus m v 2i. And again, we know that this guy is zero because initially the, the second ball doesn't have any speed. So we can drop this guy safely. And then we can also cancel the three amps here. So eventually we get this equation v1f plus v1 with 2f equals 3, 1, 9. All right? And then what is this with 1, 9 here? We said this with 1, 9, it's just this uh, velocity we calculate here. So uh, eventually, we have uh, 
this equation. Okay? So now we can see that, okay, we have got two equations from the conservation of energy and momentum. So we also have two unknowns here, V1F and V2F. So mathematically, we can always uh, solve for these two unknowns using two equations. Okay, I'm not going to solve it, solve it here because uh, it's just uh, totally algebra and it's not very difficult. And I'm just going to write down the solution. The solution is um, V1F equals to equals zero and V2F equals square root of two GH and which is exactly the initial uh, velocity of the first ball before the collision. Okay, so now if we look at the solution, so we know, we will know that, okay, after the first ball strikes the second ball, this guy is gonna stop immediately because the final speed of this guy is uh, zero. And the second ball is gonna move to the right with this uh, velocity which is the same as the velocity of the first ball before the collision. So these, uh, the second ball is, get, is going to get all of it, uh, the first ball, the velocity, and then move, the moves to the right. And immediately, this guy is going to strike this, the third ball here, right? Because they are in touch of each other. And this collision, the same as the collision between one and two. So without uh, doing any math, we know that, okay, after this collision, the second ball is going to stop, and the third ball is going to start to move to the right with the uh, with the same uh, with the same velocity, and then it just goes on and on until the fourth the fourth ball strikes the, the fifth ball, and after this collision, the fourth ball is going to stop, and then the fifth ball is going to swing to the right with uh, with initial uh, velocity square root of uh, 2 gh. So that's why uh, in the first round, the first ball can reach the height, the same, the same height as uh, where I released the first ball. And if, uh, if there's uh, no freaking force at all, so we can expect that uh, these five guys, they can move like forever. Okay? So, uh, and we see that this is the only solution here, okay? We don't have any other solutions. So that means that these five balls, they have to behave, uh, they have to behave uh, this way, okay? There's no other possibilities for them. And that, that's uh, exactly what we have seen here, okay? So uh, that's, that's, that's the power of physics laws, okay? Even though you may not notice it, you may not notice it, so uh, they are they are controlling they are they governing everything uh, we see everything we do in our life. Okay, so I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Absolutely.